Just a few days ago, we were celebrating the 40th anniversary of the moon landing, and a lot of questions were being raised about where Africa fits within the broader realm of space travel, uh, space research, medical research through space satellites, communications research. With this 50 million rands injection, where does that put us? Well, Rato, good morning to you, and thank you very much to your viewers um, for having me. Um, it puts us in, in a starting position uh, for, be, because space is a rather expensive business, as you know. Um, but having a, a large partner like the NEF um, investing in space is, is really something that, that starts off the baseline for us. Now, obviously, we will be able to, to use this money to prepare ourselves to launch um, forth uh, satellites and, and infrastructure uh, development within the company so that we can uh, you know, take the next step, uh, develop more satellites, mm -hmm. get more investment from um, uh, programs basically from governments, uh, pr preferably Af African governments, uh, and then take it from there. Okay, well, essentially a lot of your work is going to go into the design and manufacturing of satellites, and then over 20 years you'll be launching quite a few of these. But many people would argue that Africa's space research needs are now. We need to investigate uh, issues such as military security networks through satellites. We need to investigate water availability, like you were hearing earlier on in East Africa. We need to look at land availability. We might even need to do a few HIV trials, as Mark Shuttleworth did in outer space. And really, the bulk of the work should be going towards research versus the design. Yeah, the, it's, a, it's a very difficult uh, value proposition that we are talking about. Um, this, this space research in South Africa is, is funded, in essence, um, largely uh, in, in areas that look from, from the Earth towards outer space. Uh, you have SKA, you have um, SALT, you have HARTRAW that does uh, radio astronomy. Um, and obviously, these things are important in, 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 in looking towards outer space and familiarizing ourselves um, and getting data um, for scientific purposes. What we do is we uh, develop um, satellite platforms uh, that allow us to look back to Earth. Mm -hmm. And um, that is just as an important part because you, you now can look at your terrestrial areas, you can look at atmosphere, you can look at um, you know, the magnetic um, uh, sphere around the Earth mm -hmm. um, in, in such a way that it, it will add to existing knowledge. Now, from, from where we're standing, I would, I would really like us to build enough platforms very quickly, and we can actually do that. Uh, be, we believe that we can, um, and and have these space experiments um, right. on our platforms. Because what we do is is we just basically develop the the platform for uh, experiments to go onto, um, right. uh, and 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 allow our clients to actually gain the benefit. Now, in Africa, as you so rightly have said, there, there are many needs. Um, and there are needs that that's very diverse. Now, I, I'm, not, I'm unfortunately not Solomon, so <laughs> I really cannot distinguish between how mo money should be made available right. to um, differing areas of research. But uh, I think we all dreamt when we were children. And uh, those dreams are uh, luckily for us, reality struck, right. and um, we, we're not dreaming about the final frontier anymore when we grow up. Some of us still do, um, and that is, that, that is what we do. That is our preference, that is our, you know, that's the reason for living, right. um, and yeah. Let's talk about sharing costs and also sharing technologies, because there is uh, the opportunity to share in observation data with countries like China, Brazil, and other African countries. How much of that work is being undertaken? And how many restrictions are there? Because we know that in China launching its satellites, they've faced various restrictions from uh, the United States. Yeah, the, uh, South Africa obviously does not have its own launch capability. Uh, the satellites that we built, uh, like Sumbandila Sat, for instance, uh, our, our, our latest small South African satellite, which is a pathfinder to a large degree, 
uh, are launched from other countries. Uh, Sumba Dealerset will be launched from Kazakhstan. Uh, as, you, as you know, um, we were going to launch it from the Bering Sea at some stage, um, it's, it's down to Kazakhstan, and then we even considered, or the DST even considered um, India. Uh, so there are various ways and means that, that launches can take place. We, we obviously recommend to our clients what launches to go for based on um, the reliability of the launcher and obviously also the cost. Um, CBIRS, which is the uh, satellites that fly on the South African Brazil China um, collaboration, produces a ground imaging or ground sampling resolution uh, in the 20 meter to 30 meter range. Now, the uh, Satellite Application Center at the CSIR in Pretoria have done a survey amongst government departments, and, and these have found uh, that uh, the the, the, the really scientifically useful range for ground sampling distance is somewhere lower than um, one meters to um, about well, 10 meters or so. And in that range, you, you can uh, mine data very well um, and, and, and apply it across, across right. a very wide range, both for security applications to vegetation analysis, land cover, uh, all that sort of um, good stuff, also water analysis. Uh, in that range, ac across uh, many applications, um, so the, the CBIRS international collaboration um, is, is useful in providing large coverage. Um, and if you want to obviously then uh, construct a, um, you know, a, a large uh, area map and all that sort of stuff with, uh, you know, low right. resolution, then, then that's fine. All right, Ron, Sasha Narishkin would like to ask you something. Ron, quick question. Thank you. Um, it's all very well the collection of this data, but in terms of its dissemination, how is it done thereafter and how does that beneficiate the ultimate end users, the people on the ground, the small subsistence farmers, etc.? Well, we, we obviously, as you, as, you, uh, as you very well know, we build the, the satellites, um, the data, we build the, the, the links for the data to download to places like the Satellite Application Center. Now, initially, for some of the uh, the commissioning phase uh, also obviously requires us to, to interact with the satellite. Um, and eventually, once that is over, after a period of anything between three and, and nine months, we will then be able to uh, shift operations over to SAC from Stellenbosch University, um, and they will download the data. They, they will download the data in what is known as level 1A. Now, the, the, the useful uh, element of the data only comes when you have done some geometric correction and all sorts of other corrections, atmospheric correction and stuff. And um, you then work the data up to a level 3, that, that, is, um, that, that tells you where the data uh, is, is coming from, um, what it is useful for, what spectral signatures can you really rely upon. And then the, the SAC will then supply that data through the Department of Agriculture, Land Affairs, and, and, and all the, and DWARF, um, to obviously to, to final end users like small subsistence farmers. That will allow these farmers obviously to, 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 well, it will allow the government first of all to see that all the land they've been giving to the for small subsistence farmers is actually being worked um, okay. without them going out there on a day-to-day -day basis and checking. Because you can, from the space, you can actually see whether land is actually uh, economically active or it is not economically active depending on the season. So that's the sort of thing that, uh, that, that was a very small example, but that's the sort of thing that will happen directly from the Satellite Application Center who will be dealing and distributing the data. 